Hi everyone, Richard here at Calvin Wazoo, bringing you another video and kind of wanted to catch up. I got some new records. Man, I've got to slow down on the spending. Um, I have I have issues that I'm going to need to save some money for. Uh, so I'm going to have to put the brakes on that, which I just love digging through record stores. And I love going to online vendors and, and checking out what they got, you know. Oh, well. Anyway, you know, I went into the record local record store here, you know, and of course I came out with some new stuff. But it's stuff that I've been looking for, and I'm really happy it's finally being reissued. You know, for example, this one, The Pretty Things. Uh, this is uh, SF Sorrow, which is uh, a really classic, classic album. And, you know, in Discogs and other online vendors, there aren't a lot of reissues of it. And OGs and even some of the minor reissues that are available are just like really expensive. Uh, and most of them, you, you, you know, you got to buy it from somebody in Great Britain or at least in Europe someplace. So seeing this reissued and seeing it available for, you know, 21 bucks uh, was really, really sweet. And it's on the uh, Madfish label. And I've made of some purchases uh, for Madfish and they do some high quality stuff. This is like a serious concept album. Um, I mean, I didn't even know about them until, like I said, I was doing a lot of reading about Sid Barrett, and they were all part of that Cambridge scene and then the London scene, uh, you know, when Pink Floyd was developing and becoming, you know, what they were to become. And uh, they talked about the pretty things. And so this, it's, it's thought, there is this story. And then even in the liner notes, which, you know, has the lyrics, there are also these little narrations that are the transitions between songs. And it's beautiful music. You know, it's, it's about this family um, that settled down, husband and wife. They're called the Sorrows. Uh, living by factories, um, and they have a son, they have a child that uh, is S.F. Sorrow, Sebastian F., nobody knows what the F is for. Um, here's beautiful album again, here's the, you know, the back, but here's the storyline on, on the inside, and, um, they, yeah, I wanted to look up what the, the way they, uh, oh, where is it, where is it? I should have looked this up before, you know, how they describe the, um, the factories that they're, you know, living by. And, of course, I can't find it quickly enough which blows the entire idea that I was going to do a relatively quick video. Um, hmm, hmm. Anyway, because uh, he goes to work after he comes back from the war, or he goes to work actually before the war. There it is, working at the Factory of Misery. That's what it is, the Factory of Misery. And his name is Sorrow. You, but that that mention, I just love it because of the way it, it um, just so perfectly in a few words describes the working man's life, you know, everywhere. Um, working in the Factories of Misery just so you can make enough money to buy a home and do the best to raise your kids and and you know where is all the money being made by that factory really going not not in your pockets in you know with that sort of 
um, somewhat negative point of view, this this album, the music is beautiful all the way through. It, but it starts off with such as this kind of this hope, hopeful message, you know, that we're going to do something. And then SF Sorrow goes off to war. Uh, and, you know, he survives the war, but when he comes back and he'd been married, excuse me, he got married before he went to war, but when he comes back, um, he loses his wife in, a, in an accident. And then the rest of the album is about how he continues to just pull himself through life without feeling any life. And, you know, his despair um, that he carries with him. And it's so warmly told in, in, in my view, but also so realistically told. And, you know, in the end, the last song, which is called The Loneliest Person, you know, and if you were the loneliest person in the world, your name would have to be me. Um, you know, I think we all think that. We all think that, that we are at times the loneliest person in the world. And, you know, we all face hardships and, and everybody's hardship is different. To say that someone else's hardship is more difficult maybe because you come from a background of privilege, um, your hardships, the hardships that you face, the true hardships, the ones of your your soul, of the heart, um, those are unique and they're difficult for everybody no matter what your environmental circumstances are. That's the kind of hardship I'm talking about in every one of us faces that kind of hardship and it's all these external things that happen to us that increase our hardship if we just stop being assholes to each other you know this world uh, would be a lot better because we all face we all face hardships all right enough pontificating uh, something else that I found that was kind of cool, and I bought it because of the this Obi strip that comes uh, with it, which is kind of interesting. I'm seeing more uh, European and, and American, U.S. I should say, um, record labels using these Obi strips uh, as kind of promotion, especially you know something that's a little bit obscure like this one. So this is a skull session of Oliver Nelson. Cosmic, excuse me, Cosmic Jazz Funk Classic from 1975. Um, you know, it's got Lonnie Liston Smith on it. Um, all the liner notes. What what Oliver Nelson did, and heck, I can pull it out to show you. Um, he wrote, he was not just a jazz funk uh, musician and composer has a inside a lot of information back. I mean, it's a pretty wild album, you know, album cover. So, uh, but he wrote his style of writing makes you think of 1970s TV show soundtracks in introductory themes, you know. I mean, it's that kind of a, of a funk. Um, and, and it's good, it, even though it's, you know, it's pretty cheesy, you know, this is, this is good jazz funk fusion, but yeah, it's, you can hear the cheese and it's not like, you know, Velveeta cheese though. This is, this is gourmet cheese, um, but it's still cheesy and delightfully so. So I was, uh, very happy, you know, this this qualifies as, you know, a, a cold buy or, you know, uh, just one of those uh, spur of the moment purchases that you make on something, uh, you know, a cold buy that you know nothing about what it is you're getting. And then being so delightfully surprised when you get it home and start to listen to it. Uh, some other things I picked up and one of them came in the mail. You know, um, I got something to say about that. 
Um, I've been, you know, getting uh, butthole surfers. I just, yeah, so this is Hairway to Steven. So this is great, great material. Um, crazy, somewhat puerile label, uh, but, you know, still wonderful stuff. And then I also ordered their debut album, uh, which is, I want to make sure I get it right because I never remember it correctly. You know, I grew up in the 70s. Uh, you know, my teen years were during the 70s. So um, memory is not necessarily all that reliable. Uh, Psychic, Powerless, Another Man's Sack. So this was their official debut um, studio album. And... I bought it from Amazon and they already they already heard me on this because that album was shipped in this. You know, that's what they sent it. Sent it in. And it was amazing that the wax wasn't broken when I opened it up. Uh, the corners got bent a bit there's some creases from the corners so there's i would say you know for buying a brand new album that now that i've opened and played it i'm saying it's near mint minus um but the cover i'm putting down is very good because when it also should be near mint minus uh it just blew me away because every time i've ordered from amazon it's always come in a box and sometimes you know, they'll put it in a box that's too big, but it's still a box. It's still better protected that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, I let them know. I was extremely disappointed with what they sent me. You know, I talked to their robot for a while, and then I got somebody online who, when I presented the situation, they got somebody higher up. And, you know, so... Um, you know, I don't need to send it back to them. I wanted them to know. I've been shopping with them since the late 90s, I think. And um, that's just pathetic to be shipping a record in something like this. So they gave me a minor discount or whatever. You know, that's all well and good. But I got them saying that, you know, they're not going to let it happen again because for sure if I... Should I order another record and it comes in a plastic bag like this, then um, that's it. No more, no more shopping for vinyl at Amazon. But the album, yes, I was going to talk about the album. And it, again, this, this is so good. Um, I'm just really digging the Butthole Surfers. I knew about them for many, many years, but I never really listened to them. And every, so I'm very interested in getting just about everything that's available. You know, this is a, this is a, a band that um, I'm going to be a semi-completist about. Not interested in getting any OGs. You know, like I say, the only the only collect uh, part of my collection where I am really focused on getting not just the reissues but the original releases and then also sometimes even variants in between is with my Frank Zappa uh, collection which I'll be having another video uh, coming up on that because I got the box set the hot rats box set um, anyway good stuff love listening to the butthole surfers it's just Gibby Haynes his singing at times what he does with his voice going from these weird shrieks and 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 he uses some other electronics to even further distort his voice at times and then he talks with this uh, I mean they're from Austin but I still think he's talking and, and singing with an exaggerated you know Texas drawl kind of way of talking and it, it just it's great stuff i know a lot of you uh, that i know that who uh, watch this channel you know who the butthole surfers are 
you, you know, and you, you have their recordings. I knew about them, but I'm really only uh, getting into them. And maybe my renewed interest in punk, especially punk rock, the Dead Kennedys, you know, within the Butthole Surfers and, and um, Big Black and others, is because what they were singing about and talking about, you know, is happening around us right now. I mean, it's kind of hard to not see it happening. Um, but I don't want to end on that note. I, I, I want to keep this focused on my new vinyl, and I'm going to start listening to uh, some... I'm going to listen to this funk album again and get uh, some of that sweet cheese because, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good gourmet cheese. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, like, subscribe, get any comments, leave them in the down under. Uh, you know, what, uh, what's my next Butthole Surfer album, you know? I've got three now, all right, the two I showed you, and the other one is called Locust Something or Other. Um, it's got the, like a giant insect head on the cover. You know which one I'm talking about? Ah, oh, that's a great album too. Um, anyway, you know, what else, uh, should I be looking at? But whatever it is you do, always remember to enjoy your music.